Oh boy. Oh boy, I had to wake up at 7, almost 8 o'clock in the morning. Watch a video from Esnik telling me I'm the massive biggest idiot for, for basically recommending Elements Heavy OS. I'm joking, people. I am joking. He say I'm wrong, and I will tell him why I think he is wrong. So, I love Esnik. Amazing guy. I love his content. He's the reason why I do what I do. Uh, how can I say this in a nice way? <laughs> he knows what he's talking about, okay? And he's an intelligent guy. And that is kind of his downfall. He lives in a world in Linux. Yes, he, he's, he has uh, family friends and family members that use Windows and stuff like that. But he's not so much exposed to... Or it feels like he's not that much exposed to the rest of the computing world. Meaning like the... Uh, tablet users, the phone users, and stuff like that. So he criticized Elements Heavy OS. And he has some good points, and I will now go in and talk about some of them. There's a, a lot of things I don't like about Elements Heavy OS, but there's a reason why it's recommended for a lot of new people. And that is that, I, I always say this, we have to talk and speak in words and 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 to and in, in a way that people that live in the world they live in understand. And elements have always do that really well. Why? Well, let me tell you why. Or first, let me tell you what I think that he's kind of right about. The software sender is shit. I get that. But the software sender mimics the software sender on an Android phone. I don't have my phone on me right now. Uh, and I don't have my webcam on, so I can't show you guys it anyway. But it mimics, mimics the, the, um, the way that Apple do the App Store. It mimics how... Android is doing the app store with created apps and warnings and stuff like that. So people are kind of used to it by now. This distribution here talks a little bit to the younger crowd. Okay. And Esnick, because he has the vast knowledge he has, he has the vast know-how of Linux. He sometimes forgets that it took him some time to get where he was. Because he has the knowledge he has, he wants more out of his system. Where therefore, elements have yours, and a lot of distributions are not working for him because he wants more than the average user. And he think or, or have become accustomed to that. So he think that new users are actually, and this is going to sound really condescending, but they are smarter than they really are. Some are, but most are not. And by, when I'm saying that, I'm not saying that they're stupid. I'm just saying that they don't want the same thing out of their system as he wants. Most people want the same experience or the same amount of things out of their system as they get on an Android phone, iOS phone, tablet, that's it. Because that's that's what people are using more and more nowadays. They're throwing away laptops and computers for tablets. This is the world that Elements Heavy OS is talking to. They're talking to the tablet slash Mac OS slash I don't care about my operating system crowd. They don't care about customization. They just want to change the wallpaper. They don't care about power shield. They don't care about terminals. They just care about, can I go on to Pornhub? Can I go on to uh, Netflix and stuff like that? That's the only thing they care about. And the way Elements Heavy OS is actually a really good blend between how a tablet and stuff like that works compared with what a computer works, especially more Apple, Macintosh. And I know a lot of people say, oh, we should not mimic uh, uh, touch devices and stuff like that. We kind of have to in a little bit because, or, or talk to those crowd because a lot of people are using. You more than likely have a touch phone or a smartphone. So you kind of get what I'm saying here. This is the world we live in right now. The site is shit, okay? The software sender is shit. Don't get me wrong. I don't like this. I have often said many times they need to have just a free download button right here. But just because their site is shit, there's many other distributions out there that have shitty sites. That don't make the distribution shit, they just make it a little bit, yeah, I will agree, non-user friendly. Or well, it's not user friendly because people can put in an amount and, and, and uh, pay for it. And I don't see a problem with that. I just wish it was more intuitive to figure out that you don't have to pay for it. And that's the same problem I have with the software sender. They are making it an opt out of not paying for things and I don't like that. But is, is it really that bad to want money for distribution? Free and open source, just because up till now you don't, didn't have to pay for it, don't mean you, you, that it will continue this way. 
Nothing in free and open source dictates that you cannot that you should not expect to pay for your software. Nowhere. Free and open source is all about the development of said software. It's not so much about that you as an end user can get it for free. And the more popular Linux get, the more people trying to get make a bug out of it, the more you will see this sadly. And this is not against free and open source or anything like that. It's not against the Oh, here's another thing, the Linux ethos. I'm sorry, but this, this fucking drives me off the wall. People don't care about coding philosophies, the ethos, the Unix philosophy. They just care about, can I go on Facebook or Netflix? They don't care about, is this open source or closed source? You cannot talk about the Linux ethos to a new user. Then we are talking belief system, we are talking philosophy, we are talking uh, opinions or and opinions on how software should be driven in the back end. Most users don't care about what's going on in the back end. So the Linux ethos, put it nice together in a box, poop on it and throw it out. It matters for almost no one. Even a lot of fucking Linux users don't care about the Linux ethos. That's a, 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 um, a thing for people that are really into the philosophy of Linux. And not many people are that. So you cannot talk about that. I'm sorry, you cannot talk about that. So. He talks about continuity, what it's, you know, the naming and stuff like that. And that's the thing here that I find really, really interesting. So I, I just set up uh, my, what you call it, uh, Ubuntu to kind of the default experience. I themed the, the like changed the icons and themed it a little bit, but this is kind of what you get. Why, why did I use Ubuntu? Well, Ubuntu is one of the, you would probably say this is, why can't I uh, remind me later? There we go. This is probably the distribution most people hear about when they get interested in Linux and see on websites and stuff like that. So they see this. I would debate that this is a, a kind of a little bit less or, or, or same amount intuitive to use as elementary OS. Because most people are not used to this. They used to have something called menu or something like that. And let's look at, 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 at the file manager. He said that the file manager was bare bone in elementary OS. Well, look at this. And then he was talking about you have cogwheels that you have to click to do stuff up here. It's the same with, with GNOME. KDE, XFC is a little bit different. But this, why are they doing this? I think they're calling this the global, uh, global design menu or something like that. XFC is, XFCE is migrating over to doing this exact same thing uh, in the next couple of releases, by the way. So why are they doing this? Well, this if, if you are, are, are using a uh, smartphone really, really heavily and are using apps on a smartphone really, really heavily, I'm kind of in the middle of that. I use a lot of apps. This is how they function. You either have a drop down menu with all your settings in or you have a cogwheel and stuff like that. So it makes sense that if you want to talk to the newer or younger people, you will do it in this way. I, I would say like the fi now tell is here as it's called or files as it's called here and the file manager under elementary OS they're kind of on par yes uh, Thuna, Nemo, uh, Dolphin are way better in my opinion it's a little bit more of the traditional way of doing things you have your menus down here and stuff like that I get that here's another thing he take up the editor or code yeah I do agree don't call it code Call it an editor, okay? But here's the thing, he says he say it's it's too much power user looking. Go in here, text editor. It's the exact same thing. Let me just change this to a more there you go. It it, it kind of do the same thing. You have to go on here to so drop down menus and stuff like that. And if you open a file and look at it, this looks like an advanced editor. The, the, and this is the default you get with GNOME. If you go into KDE, you get an editor called Kate. That is way more scarier looking than any other editor out there for new use because that's almost a fucking development environment in of itself. It so, has so many advanced... I love Kate, by the way. It has so many advanced features that it's, it's crazy. Why is he not tracking that down for being too power user-like? If you want an editor, a la, uh, edit the editor you get under uh, Windows or Mac, well, Mac actually uh, mimics this editor quite well. The same with the editor under, um, what you call it, elementary OS. But if you want like a notepad kind of thing, you have to go with like a program like mouse or moose or a feather pad or what it's called. 
So this is like the default editor for KDE. And this is, uh, now the theming is out of the way. So let's talk about continuity after this. This is, this is scary looking. This is a, a power user or a, a, a coder's dream to some extent. And now we get into continuity. He says that the continuity of the theming is not done right. He loves XFCE. Well, let's talk about that because it, it, continuity XFCE has a big problem right now with that. So we are in a XFCE right now. So if you open up home, or this is uh, basically your file manager. This is how they do their file manager. So let's say you go and install a program. You want a new text editor or you want, but just, just a random odd program in the software center. You may get something like this. How is this continuity? Oh, right here the soft or this program work in this way, this program works in another way. This is, this is basically, and if you look at, at the release notes of XFCE and stuff like that, this is what they're working over to get to get the continuity. But right now, there's a massive theming incontinuity in XFCE. That's why I don't like XFCE at the moment, because if I install programs, sometimes I get this, sometimes I get the traditional layout. This is not good for a new user. There's a lot of things that he's racking on, elementary OS on, that is true for everything else. K, like, like if you're using KDE, you get you don't get continuity a lot of times if you're running a, 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 a GTK applications. So let's say you have you're running a distribution on KDE, and people are telling you to install Firefox and stuff like that, and you haven't set up. Or, or the distribution maker haven't set up the theming for GTK applications. It looks shit. If you're running GNOME and you're running KDE or Qt applications and you have not set up theming for Qt applications, it looks shit. If you're running XFCE as we're doing right now and you are installing a, a GTK application, you may get this or you may get this or you may get something like this. This is like a Firefox thing. But you make it something like this, you know, the traditional way here. It's the same inconsistencies in any environments at the moment that you get with elementary OS. And he don't like this thing right here. And like I said, this, what this do here is it's talking to the Mac crowd slash the tablet touch interface crowd, AKA the younger people. They want to catch their imagination. So they are using things and setting things up in a way they are used to work. And like I said before, most people don't care to do anything else than change the wallpaper. That's it. A lot of people don't even change the wallpaper. And again, you can't really fault elementary OS by saying that the, the, the theming or there's in continuity with the uh, programs when this is what you get in XFCE. If you are on KDE and you have to set up theming for GTK, right? You get problems the same with, with GNOME or, or GTK. If you were running a QT application, as you guys saw, when I started up Kate, it looked nothing like my GTK applications. That's a Linux problem. Why is Elementary OS, I would not say it's better than anyone else for new users, but why is it a contender for new users? Well. If you are a Mac user, if you are a, a tablet user or a tab touchscreen user and stuff like that, or, or, or you know, stuff, uh, uh, devices like that, it's a good thing because it blends in how it takes a little bit from Chrome OS, it takes a little bit from Android, it takes a little bit from iOS, it takes a little bit from Mac, and then it kind of makes it its own. So it talks to those people that like to live in that world. He talks about continuity. And he, he showed these things off here, like where menus are placed and stuff like that. That's not the continuity that a lot of people talking about with elementary OS. What a lot of people talking about with elementary OS is that the desktop don't change drastically from release to release. That's the continuity a lot of people care about. They don't want to learn a new desktop environment every two years or something like that. Granted, KDE and GNOME have been really, really good at not doing that lately, but they used to be bad at it in the past. But you kind of know 
how things are if you are in the Elements Heavy OS ecosystem. The same if you are in the KDE ecosystem. Some people love to run KDE. You kind of know that, well, the editor is not called an editor, it's called Kate for, for the most part. Let's talk a theming convention, say, or, or naming conventions. It's called code under Elements Heavy OS. It's called a text editor under GNOME. And depending on what you install or what they install with um, XFCE, it's either called Mousepad or Featherleaf or something like that. That's not text editor. Then you have to wait for a box to tell you what it is. So naming conventions in Linux could be better on all fucking environments. But if you are in the KDE ecosystem, you learn that Kate, well, that's my text editor for the most part. If you are in the GNOME ecosystem, you learn quite fast that text editor is your notepad. Is it good? No. Should it be? Should there be like a, a consistent naming scheming in, in, in desktop environments? I wish there was. But it's the best we have. So you cannot say that just because they call it code. Yeah, I do, don't like the name code. It, it, it suggests that it is more than it is. Well, it suggests that it is what it is. It's a code, you know, a, a code editor. But Kate, Kate don't tell you anything. You have to, like you can see here, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it actually says down here, advanced text editor. So it gives you a little bit of a, um, a, a tool tip down here. But depending on how it's set up again, it don't give you tool tips. Not all distributions make it set it up like this. And, and that's one of the problems we have with Linux. So uh, if you compare, you see here how, like, this is fucking scary as fuck. So depending on how it's set up from the distribution maker's uh, side, Element Terry OS have set it quite good up for a new user to not be scared, so not to feel, so not feel too, in a too alienated place or alien place. The same, uh, like, if you look at my GNOME desktop, like the, 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 um, uh, if you think back, or if you can remember how that looked with a bar down the side and a bar up here, that's more alien for a Windows user or Mac user than this is. Yes, I don't like the website. Yes, I don't like the fucking software center that they don't make it easy for you to, to use non-paid thing. The warning label that it puts up that, ooh, this could potentially harm your system or it could take data and stuff like that. I don't like the way they're doing it, but they are not wrong. Nobody knows if they're doing it. Nobody knows if Kate is doing altering things in your home folder. It more than likely are not, but we don't know. And that's what they are saying to new users. And that's the same pop-up I get if I install some programs on my Android phone. The same pop-up I got under my iOS device if I installed non-curated apps. Is that you're about to install an app. Are you sure? Are, do you allow it to... to uh, access your picture folders and stuff like that. That's the warning signs we get when we're installing those apps. So for a new user, if they are already a tablet user or a smartphone user or a, a, a Mac user, they are used to it. Do it sound scary and frightening? Of course, and they should word it in another way. But they are kind of right. We don't know if the non-curated apps are, are, are doing stuff like that. It's, it's not telling us anything. Like if I if I want to install, let's see if I can find a software center here really really easy. That's a, a, a QT footer viewer. So let's say people they, they see this on the recommendation. Oh, I can use this to watch. I can view pi pi uh, pictures. Let's just install it. You don't. Oh, I need to set up the premises. Let's go into uh, that that pop up message. You get that on almost any device nowadays. It's common practice, and I think it's a good thing that you are making the user aware that this is how things are working. And again, they need to fix this fucking shit here. Let's open up the Surface and uh, let's click install. Right here, it should pop up and say, "We are not, uh, this program you're about to install will access your fold, your files, and it will access your fold, uh, your pictures that you have on, on your uh, uh, hard drive. Is that a bad thing to, to make sure that the person that knows or that the person get get the information on what the program actually are doing to your files. In a world where all of you are so privacy focused, so up your ass about programs having access to your private things, it's a really fucking big thing that a program can look at your pictures. Yes, I know it's a fucking picture viewer, 
but it's kind of okay. Or I think it's it's nice that it also tells me you do know that this program that you're about to install right now gives you give uh, give it access to uh, to your pictures. And if it has an online feature, it may send telemetry back up to the world, out to the world. And again, here continuity. This is how it looks on the uh, GNOME because it's a GT uh, QT app. And uh, Ubuntu have not installed a, a QT app theme. The only thing I did, I, I can actually go back in here and I can revert my theming back to this the standard. There you go. This is how Ubuntu will look like. So this is how this will look on a stock Ubuntu installation. So if that's not user friendly, if elements have always have incontinuities in this in their theming or in the way that they do programs, then this is not continuity for no, XFCE, KDE. Look, again, we get different paradigms on how to handle menu bars. Way more, or well, to the same extent that you will do on the Elements Heavy OS. This is not a Pantheon problem. This is not a KDE problem. This is not a, a known problem. This is a problem with the Linux community and lack of UI standardization. Meaning, there are no standards in Linux that tells us that this is the way to do it on all platforms. Or this is the way to do it on all platforms. So you get mixed matches between it, depending on what paradigms the developer of the program wants to use. And to some extent, what, what libraries they're utilizing. AKA GTK or QT. So all the things that he criticized Elementary OS for, you can criticize XFCE. Or not all of them, for some, but most of them. You can criticize XFCE, KDE, and GNOME for the exact same thing. They are doing the exact same thing. I do feel that the reason why he, he's so critical about Elements Heavy OS is that he just don't like it. I don't like it either. And that is because, yes, you are locked down. You can't customize it that well and blah, 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 and all of that. But most people don't care about it. This is also a really, really big thing that they made this really easy for people to do. So again, a lot of the things that he's criticizing Elements Heavy OS on, you can criticize Ubuntu, Mint, whatever distribution you're running for the exact same things. They all have incontinuity in their desktops. They all have unconventional naming schemes for a lot of their programs. They all are doing things that if you're not in the Ubuntu ecosystem, it makes no sense on the Pop OS ecosystem. Or if you're in the Debian ecosystem, it don't make sense in the Ars ecosystem. And that is, that is, in my opinion, a problem with Linux in general, that we don't have a, a unified way of doing things. We don't have a way of saying, this is how a program should look under Linux. Does that mean you cannot make it like this? No. But that just means that if it looked like this, you're not following the uh, guidelines and stuff like that. And you can do that if you want. But that could just mean that you're not maybe not uh, stamped as a curated program or you may not stand it as an official supported Linux program, which mean nothing in the large scheme of things. We, you cannot criticize a desktop, or in this case, this is a desktop environment criticization, that the, 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 the uh, theming or the layout of programs is a little bit all over the place as he made it out to be. It's, it's like that on any fucking pro environment. I'm running GNOME right now, and GNOME is the, the, the environment most people get uh, introduced to via Ubuntu. And I haven't done anything with this one other than installing a theme, theme and some extensions that I have disabled. So if you're new to Linux and you install this program here because you saw it in the software center, as I did, and you, oh, I need a better uh, picture manager, you get this. How is this better than under Elements Heavy OS? Yes, he's talking about the mail client. Yeah, I don't get, I don't really agree with that. Yes, they should have bundled Firefox in by default. Yes, right on some things, but in the vast majority of things, it's it's it, like the, the email client on, on the Windows, you get uh, Edge now by default, and then you go on and download Firefox. That's the same they do with that stupid fucking browser you get with Elements Heavy OS. You click on to install or you, go, you you open the software and install Firefox. That, that's kind of how it is. Being Again, being locked down, you can't theme it that well and stuff like that. That's a non-concern for 90% of the people. Esnick's problem. That, let's look at his site while uh, I'm, I'm yelling at him a little bit here. Esnick's problem is that he live in a world, in a computing world, 
that 99.9% of the people, or well, let's just say 95% of the people, are not living in. And he's lived in that world so long that I do feel that sometimes he's out of touch a little bit with the normies or the newbies and stuff like that. Because he, he, he has built up a mass... Basically, what I'm saying here, he's too smart, <laughs> okay? He has a too big of a brain. He's too smart. That's the thing. And that's the thing with people that are too smart about a subject, is that they get out of touch with people that are not that smart. I will not call them stupid, but not that that versed in that subject. So if you talk to someone that have worked out for 30 years, they have a hard time talking to someone that goes into the gym for the first time because they've built 30 years of experience up. They've built 30 years of know-how up and personal uh, experimentation up and stuff like that. Therefore, they are a little bit skewed in their opinions and their views, unless they, of course, take an education as a personal trainer. The same with someone that worked in cars for 30 years. If you go and talk to a guy like that about your car, he starts to get technical right away because that's his experience. That's the, what he has worked with for so long. So he automatically thinks that a lot of people have the same experience. That's why it's really, really hard to find amazingly smart, knowledgeable people about a subject that also can talk to the other people, meaning people that don't have the know-how and are not that smart and are not that versed in that subject. Because the longer you are in the in, in the field, the longer you work with a subject or a, a thing that you're interested in, the more and more you view you, hello girl, the more the more your views get kind of altered a little bit. I would predict that he would not say the things he said about elementary OS or Linux in general, in general, or the beliefs he has right now, like 10, 20 years ago, when he started out with Linux. I think it was more than 10 years ago, 20 years ago, because then he was a newbie. And it's really, really hard for someone with his know-how about Linux to talk to those people. That's an art form in of themselves, to be able to talk to the power users, to use that word that I don't like, and talk to the new users or, or the newcomers. And it, it always end up like this with a lot of Linux people. They get so into Linux and so versed in Linux that they tend to just stay in that power user field or this advanced user field because that's that's the group of people they talk the most to. That's the people they know how to talk to. That's the people they're more comfortable talking to. And then they slowly forget how it was to be a new user. They slowly forget how everyone else is using computers in the world. To some extent yes you may be exposed to windows once in a while but it's the same thing like if i change my tire once every two years that don't make me a car mechanic or if i go into the shop and watch them change the oil uh, two times a year that don't make me a car mechanic that just make me know where the fucking oil plug is so if you're just getting exposed to windows like once in a while or via other people you don't get the same experience if you're working with Windows in a working capacity, you, you may not even get the same experience because Windows in the workforce is locked down in a lot of time. You can't do a lot of things in, 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 the, in the enterprise environment on Windows that you can do at home in fear of all kinds of things, you know. So I do feel that even though he comes from a, a great place, he comes from a place about where he thinks about what he's talking about and he is a knowledgeable, knowledgeable guy, I do feel a lot of times that he's out of touch with that specific group of people, the new users and stuff like that. He's one of those guys that are really, really good at talking to other power users or advanced users or even intermediate users. And that's okay. That's not his fault. It's not anyone's fault. It's just that he just prefer to be in that area. But by being that, he kind of sees or he gets a little bit rose tinted with his eyes when I don't want to sign in, you idiot. Uh, he gets a little bit skewed views on what's going on here. Is elementary always the perfect distribution for newcomers? No, no distribution is because we have a, a lack of, of continuity on all platforms. We have a lack of standardization on all platforms. So if they want to jump over to Arts or Debian or something like that, they get totally different experience and they kind of have to go into a, a really small but still a learning curve. So if you use this this layout here, 
if you've been used to 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 um, Ubuntu's version of GNOME and you go over to uh, I don't know Pop OS or Fedora stock standard GNOME, it you can learn it in in like an hour or something like that or like a 30 minutes, but there are still a little learning curve. It's not like oh I know exactly where everything is. You know where most thing is, but you're not you you'll be like where's this bar now? Why is that not here anymore? Why can't I do this? Why do I have to click up here to get into my menu? And then you get a bar here. You get what I'm saying? It's sm those small things in continuities that are all over Linux and has been here for years. And that that's a Linux problem. But working with inside those Linux problems, Elementary OS is doing a really good job if you want to live in their ecosystem. And if you're already living in, in a iPhone, Mac, tablet, Android-esque world, this makes a lot of sense. If you're living in a Windows world, you should maybe go with a KDE environment to make the uh, the uh, transition more easy. Maybe a, a Ubuntu version or something like that. Or if you have the the courage, go directly to something like Ubuntu. Or you can also go with Mint Cinnamon. It makes Windows quite well also. See you all later. Watch this video. Make up your own mind. I'm just laying it as I see it. And I will see you all later. Bye bye.